The last Metroid is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. A few moments later. That intro, that intro gives me shivers no matter how many times I've seen it. You can take your Netflix skip intro button and get that the freak out of here, okay? Seriously, this game is like, what, 25 years old and still it managed to blow me away. And not in 1994 when it first came out. Hell, I wasn't even alive in 1994. But just last year, in 2018, so in this video, I'm going to talk about why I love Super Metroid. I honestly think this game has one of the best intros to any game ever. You get your small bit of dialogue telling you what happened in the previous game, so new players aren't um, confused as to what's happening. But it doesn't drag on as for too long to bore players who have already played the previous games and know what's happening. You get your small bit of dialogue and you're thrown immediately into the action. You receive a distress signal from the Ceres station, which is where you delivered your baby Metroid as the game tells you in its intro. So you fly back to the Ceres station and the game starts. Immediately you can tell that the tone of the place is really kind of dark and ominous, there's no real music or anything. So you go down a couple of these kind of stairway type things and you walk into a room. So you see the room on the title screen where the baby Metroid was, but he's not there. There's like a few dead scientists on the floor or people working there. And the glass cabinet which you see on the title screen, or not cabinet, whatever you want to call it, cylinder, container, whatever where the uh, baby Metroid is kept is cracked and the baby Metroid is gone so like that sets the tone of the story immediately I think anyway uh, then there's uh, another car door you go through and when you go through that you open the door and you see none other than the baby Metroid and then you walk over to the baby Metroid and you know you stand there for a minute and then you see like an orange eye like glow up on the screen and then you're like, oh, oh, it's just, it's just a dragon boy, you know? It's a really good intro. I really like that intro. And then um, this part this part really blew my mind starting off. I mean, I played this game last year in 2018, so I'm used to games looking as beautiful as like Breath of the Wild, um, Mario Odyssey, uh, Starlink, Smash Ultimate, you know? But just, just when you get, I think it's when you get hit down to 15 health, Ridley flies away, but he flies towards the camera. I just thought that was really cool the way they done that. And then you know there's the whole escape sequence and the awesome music the do 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 And you have to escape and you're like oh god what am I gonna do but it's actually technically it's really easy but it, it makes you feel like it's not easy. I don't know if it's just a combination of the music or whatever but um then you start running out you know and then once you get to the uh the hallway that you have to make your way up with the like stairs the, the screen starts shaking and my little mind couldn't take that. Like, what's the technology? This is part of this technology. Of this this technology. Yeah, sure. Then, right before the pattern explodes, you get out in your spaceship. So you go to um, Planet Zebus, where Ridley is. Uh, you follow him, and you make your way through the game. But they, immediately, when you land on Planet Zebus, you know what the team of the game is like. You are alone. You land. It's like raining, There's, I think there's thunder in the background, and it just sets the tone of the game immediately, and I love that. Like, I freaking love when a game does that. It's weird, it gives you this kind of sense of you're alone, but you're also never alone because there's things watching you. 
uh, for example, the security cameras, when you get down, um, when you get your first upgrade, the morph ball, uh, some security cameras, like, start watching you, and it creeps me out. The only other single humanoid-looking person you find in the game is a dead knight who is, like, outside one of the boss rooms. I think it's, I forget which boss room it is. I think, I think it's, um, the spawn spore, maybe, or maybe it's Kraid. I don't know, I think it might be Kraid's boss room, yeah, but, um, Another thing uh, I freaking love about the game is the music. Like, the main team is amazing. It, like, I, I will never skip the title screen for Metroid. It is amazing. Like, seriously, it is probably my favorite, probably it, title screen to any game. Then you have some really catchy music too, like um, the music that plays on the Brunstar, in Brunstar, in the kind of, uh, I think it's called the Planned Overworld area, Upper Brunstar, whatever you want to call it. It's really catchy. I really like that song. Uh, and then of course you have some creepy music because you're alone on a planet with aliens. It has to be creepy, but it's done really well. Like uh, one of my favorites would be um, Meridia, Meridia team. There's two teams, but uh, particularly the one that plays when you're, I think a bit underwater or a bit more down into the certain into the core of uh, whatever you want to call it meridia um i think that's really good ridley's team obviously is really really freaking good um and the escape team i had that caught in my head for ages and that's not even talking about the gameplay i mean the gameplay is amazing too i mean it's it's just so fun to collect upgrades there is a lot of backtracking in the game but it doesn't really make it feel like backtracking because you can go around multiple routes and it it really does feel like you're exploring this big interconnected planet and it doesn't feel man-made it feels kind of natural like you really are on that planet and it wasn't just some people up in a, an office coding the game you know there's also the uh, part where the baby metroid who is massive at this stage of the game this is really late in the game this is like last half an hour of the game you find the baby metroid and he is massive obviously he's been like fed food and stuff or whatever i don't know uh and he comes over to samus and he starts sucking the life out of her and when she's on one health he stops and like whimpers kind of and flies away and from that you know you know like that's the that's your metroid that's the metroid that you um that samus brought to the station once you collect all your upgrade and stuff you will be uh you'll you'll have access to this area where uh mother brain which is the uh the head basically the head the the, the head get it because brain <laughs> but uh, yeah then when you get the mother brain i think the boss which is the final boss fight of the game i think it's a really really good uh final boss fight so you start fighting mother brain and her little glass canister thing i don't know what you want to call it which is uh exactly how you fought her in the original metroid game so then when you beat uh, mother brain the glass kind of cat container whatever you want to call it that she's in collapses and she kind of falls out of it and uh, so you think you think you've beaten her. Then she stands up. What? And the real final boss fight begins. I don't think this is really a hugely difficult boss fight, but it's definitely not easy. I would say the part I love so freaking much about this boss fight is that a few rooms before as you heard me mention the baby metroid starts sucking uh, the health out of you which and the baby metroid is huge at this stage of the game and he uh, starts sucking like all of your life until you're down to one um so when you're fighting mother brain she uses this like really just overpowered attack it's like a rainbow beam type thing and it just brings you down to like one health and uh, basically or not one health but uh, it, it, it it does a ton of damage to you and basically Samus is kind of on the floor and she can't move and uh, then when Mother Brain is preparing her final blow which will 100% kill Samus Baby Metroid flies in and just yeets just um and just chomps on Mother Brain's head like it's a Big Mac or something so after he's done like sucking the life literally out of Mother Brain and it looks like Mother Brain is dead he comes over to uh, Samus and starts basically giving Mother Brain's life to Samus, he starts rehealing, refueling everything, like he, he starts rehealing Samus' health up to like full. And basically while this is happening, you kind of see Mother Brain breathing and it's just really well done. And uh, so basically when you're nearly up to full health, she gets back up and she starts attacking the baby Metroid. And the baby Metroid doesn't like fight back or anything, he just continues, um, just continues healing Samus. And then right as you get up to full health, she shoots the final like a uh, beam and it kills the baby Metroid.
And then Samus' team starts to play, and oh god, this moment was just so freaking epic when I first played it. Like, first of all, the baby Metroid coming in to uh, suck the life out of Muller Brain actually scared me. Like, the noise it makes and everything. But then when the baby Metroid died, like, you... I actually felt angry. Like, Muller Brain must die. And it's not that hard to fight from then on, because you have an overpowered uh, beam. Basically, the Metroid had sucked up Mother Brain's like, life force, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so, he has the ability she used on Samus, which is the rainbow beam thing. He gives it to Samus, and Samus has it then. Samus can use it in her cannon, charge shot, whatever you want to call it. And it's the most overpowered weapon in the game, but you don't get it till the final boss fight, obviously. And, really, it's not that hard from then on. And then when you kill Mother Brain, you must escape again because there has been a time bomb set. And it's not really clear if Samus sets this or if it's someone else. Like, it could be Mother Brain when she dies. It could be like a self-destruct thing. And I really like the end sequence of the game because it pretty much ends the same way it starts. I mean, at the start of the game, you're in the space station, you fight Ridley, and then you must escape from the space station before it explodes. And at the end of the game, you're basically doing the same thing. It's just it's with Mother Brain and it's on planet Zebus, so it's to a much larger scale. And you've three minutes to escape but the thing is this time it's actually hard like it is it's not easy to escape from planet zebus i i can do it because i've played the ending sequence so many times just because i freaking love it but uh some of my friends who i've handed the controller to who've played a bit of metroid but have not beaten the game fully they can't like they they will they will be, get about three quarters or half of the way but they won't be able to get there fully You get into your spaceship and you fly off just as the planet explodes exactly like the start of the game basically when a uh, space station explodes and that is it that is the end Samus is cool and Ridley's too big for Smash Bros. Okay, never mind. He's not anymore. Thank you, Sakurai. Bum 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 bum. Not on there. That's basically my thoughts on Super Metroid. I just really do love this game, it's music, everything it has to offer. Um, I really do think it's a good game and I really do recommend you all check it out. So uh, yeah, uh, I said this in my last video, in my last Smash video I made, uh, talking about Smash Ultimate, but I'm going to say it once, one final time here. Uh, a shout out to a YouTuber that has kind of, uh, I don't know how to word this, inspired me, sort of motivated me make these types of more scripted videos talking about games I love instead of just playing a game live and you know uh, commentating over it but uh, yeah uh, his name's B squared I really do recommend you check him out and subscribe to him his uh, videos are actually really good I do highly recommend you check them out um, but yeah that's gonna be all for this video uh, hopefully I'll do a few more of these in the future they do take a bit longer to make because I kind of have to script them out and um, stuff obviously this part is scripted again as you can probably tell uh, but yeah, so that's all for this time. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time and ciao.